Hi everyone, my name is Karol and welcome to Ads Courses, a place where you can learn the best digital marketing and web analytics tricks. Today I'm gonna show you a step-by-step -step guide on how to implement custom content grouping in Google Analytics using Data Layer and Google Tag Manager. If you want to watch more tutorials like that, don't forget to hit the subscribe button right now. Okay, so are you ready to learn something new? Just hold on to your hats and let's start. Okay, so what is content grouping? It just lets you group content into a logical structures that reflect how you think about your site. So you don't have to actually analyze content on an individual URL level, but you can create segments of content and analyze these groups separately. So for example, you can create content groups about authors and see which authors of posts actually perform better when it comes to site metrics, for example. Or you can create content groups about page type or post type. These are just the examples. You can create your own content grouping. And in this example, I will actually create content groups about authors. And you can create content grouping in Google Analytics using URL rules, but this method is not perfect because whenever you change your URL structure, it may crash your content grouping settings. And in this tutorial, I will actually show you how to use data layer to create content grouping so that your implementation will be safe. And there are two different methods when it comes to implementing data layer content grouping. If you have a WordPress website, you would want to use a plugin to do this. If you're not using WordPress, uh, you would want to add a data layer script into your website. And I will show you these two methods in this tutorial. Okay, so first let's see how you can add data layer when you're using WordPress website. Okay, so I'm in my uh, WordPress panel right here. And you can actually do this using Tag Manager plugin. And I'm sure that you can actually do this with Metronet Tag Manager plugin or Duracell Tommy's Tag Manager uh, plugin. So these are actually the two most popular Tag Manager plugins for WordPress. And in this example, I will show you how to set it up on a Metronet Tag Manager plugin. So let's go to the plugin settings over here. And you need to paste your Google Tag Manager code in here. And here you have this post page variables that are default. So you don't have to set this up. It's just waiting here for you. And as you can see here, there are different variables like title, which will be the post title, author, which will be the author name, and other like word count, page ID, and page post date, right? So this will be the data layer that will be sent into your website. And here you can add new items if you wish. In this example, I will actually use the outer content groupings. So I have this variable in here and you just click save changes. Okay, so now you may want to see if this data layer is working correctly. So you need to install the data slayer Google Chrome plugin. I will post a link to download it in the description of this video. And if you have it installed, you just right click whenever on the website and inspect. And here you have this tab data slayer available. So you just click here. You may want to refresh a website. Okay, and here you can see this variables that are sent. And we have all the variables from the Tag Manager plugin that are in here. You can see that they are sent in here. So we have outer and the value will be my name. And we have a variable logged in and it will say if I'm logged in or not. And a word count and a title and a post date, for example. So we can see it all works okay. Okay, so I just showed you how to implement data layer if you have a WordPress website, but what if you don't have a WordPress website? You would want to add a script, a data layer script into your website. And here I have an example of this script. It's a very simple data layer script where we have our variables, page category variable and an author variable. And here you would actually need to add dynamically a page category and dynamically here an outer name, for example. And you can add other variables if you wish. This is just an example. And you need to paste this code with dynamic values, of course, into your website. Okay, so I just showed you how to implement data layer using a WordPress plugin or data layer script. And from now on, all these next steps are the same whenever you use the WordPress solution or not. So in next step, we want to create content grouping in Google Analytics settings. And to do this, you want to log into your Google Analytics account and go to the settings over here. And here you have a content grouping settings. 
As you can see here, I have my other content grouping uh, settings, which are URL based. And now I want to add new content grouping. And I want to give it a name. It will be author. And here you want to select the group by tracking code, which will be the data layer option. So make sure this is enabled. And here you select the index. I'm already using the first index in my other content grouping settings. So I will select two. And now you click done. Okay, so it's using a slot two. And just click save. And here you can see we have our outer content grouping, which uses the second index. Okay, so the first step would be to add custom variables into your Google Tag Manager. And to do this, just log into your Google Tag Manager account and go to the variables section over here and scroll down all the way to the user defined variables and add new variable and give it a name. It actually doesn't matter how you will name your variable. And now just click here and select data layer variable. And here you need to add a data layer var variable name and it actually needs to be the same as in your website. So in my case, it will be author. You can check your data layer name using the data slayer plugin. And now just click save. Okay, it's right here. And now you can publish your changes. Great. Okay, so the final step would be to modify your Google Analytics tracking ID tag in Google Tag Manager. So let's do that now. Okay, so just select your Google Analytics tracking tag and just click on the tag configuration and select this enable overriding settings in the tag and expand this more settings over here and expand this content groups over here. And here you can add a content group. And here just select the index that your content grouping is using. So in my case, it will be two. And here you can just select the content group variable that we just added before. Okay, so this is my variable. And you can add more if you want. Uh, in this example, I'm actually using only this one content grouping. And click Save. Great, you could preview your changes. I'm sure about my implementation, so I will just click the Submit and Publish. Great. Okay, so where you can actually find your content grouping uh, in Google Analytics. When you go to the Behavior section and Site Content and All Pages, normally you would see all your different pages URLs over here. And here you have an option, a content grouping option, and you can select your content grouping that you just created. And this is a fresh implementation, so I don't have any data about the authors, but I will just show you how it looks in a post category content grouping. If you select your content grouping, you will see that your URLs are now aggregated into groups. So I have my uh, groups over here. And if you select one, you will see all the URLs within this content group. And this is how it works. Okay, so that's how you can create custom content grouping in Google Analytics using data layer. That's all for today. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you want to watch more tutorials like that. And see you in the next episode. Bye!